On today's episode of the show, I'm joined again by Coach Matt Snyder. Coach Snyder is the running backs, fullbacks coach at Western University. Uh, he's also coached for a long time in, in the summer football and high school world in London. Um, today, I'm super excited. We're talking option football, um, specifically kind of Coach Snyder's past history with South and, and London Junior Mustangs running, um, you know, some of the double option stuff that I think people have a lot of interest in and a great way to get a mobile quarterback involved. So, Coach, thanks for being on. What kind of led you to option football, and, and what do you like about it at the a high school level? We had a, a kid come through our program that was probably the best player I've ever coached in my life. He was a, a quarterback that was built like a running back, and he had the speed of a, a track star and the toughness of uh, like a UFC fighter. And we just kind of felt like if we don't get this kid the ball a ton, I'm going to – be the biggest idiot in the, in the country so <laughs> we had to kind of come up with some things to get him involved um he's playing at queens now unfortunately <laughs> but uh he's still a good kid um so we were we were a huge gap scheme team at, at uh, south we were running like power and and counter h counter tray a little bit of buck sweep basically any like down block and pull scheme you could run and so I didn't know anything about zone football. I never played in a, in a zone offense. I'd never really coached around zone. I'd seen it a little bit. My brother had some experience running it. So we talked about it. I just, and I understood it. Like I read about it, but there's a difference I think between reading about something and doing it. So we're kind of like, I don't think we can run a zone based offense. We, we had run some stuff where we were like gap scheming and reading the backside end as well. um, For quarterback keeper, just like your naked read off the end. But we kind of stumbled on running some uh, like two man veer. I was a huge Georgia tech fan. So I would spend all day Saturday watching Georgia tech and, and Navy and army watch run like option football. But I also knew that I didn't want to be pitching the ball around. For we sure. didn't want to, we didn't want to get out of like our pistol set. There's guys that are running like some true triple option in Ontario. The guys that uh, here on Heights are doing an awesome job with it. And I tried to find some film on them um, to kind of study, but we, we eventually just started saying like, Hey, why don't we just like bl- not block the end and read the end on the front side of power. And then as we started doing that, it kind of transitioned to becoming like this two man veer scheme. So we started researching it, reading basically anything I could find about it, kind of watching some uh, Nevada stuff, reading about some things online. There's a couple of guys in the States that were running this pistol veer. And, th- and the thing we liked about it, it was, very close to what we were running already. We were coaching gap scheme football like 99% of the time. And it was very similar to power and counter techniques in terms of like getting down blocks on the front side and creating a wall and like getting that, that double team from the guarded tackle. I mean, personally for me, like the, I think the best thing about football, if I had to pick one thing about football that I just love, it's that guard tackle deuce block on like a power where they just get like, together with a guy between them and drive his ass this way so we kind of wanted that in our offense as much as we possibly could and this was just very similar to what we were doing already and it gave us a way to get our quarterback involved by reading a defender and and running the ball when he got a look and it also kept people honest because i think it looked um it looked complicated but by taking away the pitch phase and just running as like a two-man concept it gave us what those zone reads teams were getting without having to coach zone. So that's kind of how we got to it. And um, it worked really well. And it worked really well because, to be honest with you, the kid we had at quarterback made a lot of people wrong, even when they were maybe close to being right. But as we started moving to other quarterbacks, we ran in the summer as well. Uh, it's a good sound scheme. And I just really liked it. So, I mean, I think at any time you can take – you know, if you're looking to add something to your offense, like you said, you know, you guys are a gap scheme, lots of work on double teams, lots of work on down blocks. If anytime you can keep as much of that stuff in whatever you add is is huge. And I think that, you know, presenting something that might look complicated on the outside, but, you know, to your guys, it's the same as something else it's, or it's very close to that. You know, I think especially in the box, you know, like for your five guys up front, um, you know, and I yeah. even think for, for your tailbacks and stuff too, there's that level of confidence in like knowing what they need to do. And then mm-hmm. that lets those guys play fast. And, you know, in the box, there's no room for mistakes. You can't, you know, people talk about coverage. Well, if you lose your leverage, these are your strategies to get your leverage back. You know, your strategies to get your leverage back as an old lineman on a down block are basically, you know, be way better than the other guy. If not, mm-hmm. you know, you're not getting it back. And mm-hmm. so I think that that, that element of, okay, we're a gap scheme team, but we want to add some 
some principles of zone for this this reason or that reason. So we're not just going to add the zone that we see, you know, other teams running because we're going to add another thing. We're yeah. going to find a way to get that out of something we already run is, is a brilliant way to go about it. Yeah. And that's kind of how we got to it. And um, the more we ran it, the better we did. But the first year we ran it, we put it in kind of mid-season. And we fumbled a couple exchanges. And we were like, ah, I don't know about this. Like, we're fumbling the ball. So we kind of so – I went in the summer and we started running it in the summer. And uh, we were meshing every day. Summer football is, you know, you don't practice as much, but you don't have too many kids. You can kind of really focus on some things. Whereas in high school, it's so like we had everybody on our offense was also playing defense. And those kids were also our best special teams guys. So like we were basically getting 40 minutes a day to work offense. That's indie systems, everything. Cause our defense corner, he wants his 40 and our team's guy wants his time as well. Plus we got to stretch him out. We got to run him. Um, we were meshing in, in the summer football, every practice, we're running beer mesh for five, seven, 10 minutes with our backs Corvex. And then we started doing it South again. Like we got a beer mesh at least every other day. And the more we started doing that and like the beer got really, the mesh got really crisp, the better, like it just became like a really good offense. And again, I I mean, I'm not going to understate the fact that our quarterback was a huge part of it, but we had other quarterbacks come through the system as well that we're also very good at. So I I like it. It's a good little system. I think it's super easy. And I think it kind of really fits well just for the things you said at high school because it's simple and it translates over. Zone offense is awesome. Inside zone is a great play. Like I we run it at Western a ton. They have so much success with it. There's so many things you can do up it, but there is some things about it in terms of like the linemen, I feel like are very complex and it can be overly complex. Sometimes I think the gap scheme is a little bit more forgiving when you have a guy that maybe plays left tackle that doesn't work out or that mm-hmm. doesn't play summer football, because you get like that mechanical advantage of just a down block. And I came from the wing T in high school. So I, I kind of used to like the angles and the, the kickout concepts. So just, for sure. Yeah. So get, so getting into it, you know, you've prepared some, some cutups and some diagrams sure. for us, which is amazing. You know, where do you kind of like in terms of the base play? Like, you know, I think a lot of people have some idea about what we mean by option football, but kind sure. of walk us through your base uh, two man yeah. beer and, and, you know, what, who are you reading? How does sure. the, the blocking scheme work and, and that type of stuff? Yeah, awesome. So th- this is basically inside zone. And, and I wrote some notes down I'll kind of refer to uh, inside zone. Like if you're running an inside zone with a, with a read component, so you're reading the backside end, you know, basically what you're trying to do is like split the defense. So you, your O line is blocking the left, your running back's going to the left, but your quarterback is reading the right end and he's attacking to the right. It's a great concept. The inside zone's awesome. You get answers versus every front. You know, it's very versatile. You can, you can run inside zone as your base play and have a whole offensive system. You could do anything you want to get out of inside zone with your O line just blocking inside zone. Um, this is kind of what the veer is. It's essentially our old line. It, it looks very similar. Our old line's blocking down away from the play, and our quarterback and running back are attacking kind of the same side of the play. So we would basically tell our running back, "You're going to run up the guard's butt, and you're going to we're going to create a down blocking wall where you're going to run that wall." That's a big coaching point for us: is running the wall as fast as you can. And our quarterback's just reading the front side end, and if he tears down, we're going to pull the ball and we're going to attack outside of him and support that keep. And the basic, the most easiest way to run it is just to run it as a two-man option game. Read the front side end. If he tears down, correct, pull it, and run the ball for keeper. And I'll start to show you some of the things that we did where we added like a pass component to become more of like a triple team. But it's super basic. Uh, in this illustration, we got the the fullback is down blocking inside the defensive end. So if we were getting like a three tech, and the angles aren't as great because the, the splits on my huddle program are a little tighter, but if we were getting like a front side three tech, like a super basic 43 defense, it would essentially look like this. We might have the fullback on a little bit better angle to the Sam backer. If we were running it to like a one tech, it kind of, you know, essentially be like this. We're just creating down blocks. Everybody's blocking away. If you don't have a guy in your backside gap, you can double front side with your eyes in your backside gap. So very similar to zone blocking concepts in terms of you can work a, a double team, but still protect your gap, but you're getting down blocks. And then we'll talk a little bit about, you know, why we would arc the fullback outside of the defensive end versus uh, have him down block inside the defensive end. So here's the first example. We're going to run uh, Veer, and we're going to down block the fullback inside the, the defensive end. We're bringing this defensive end right here. And our running back is going to be on this angle. Our quarterback is going to be on this angle. And we should be, in theory, down blocking the fullback. 
to this guy right here. In this clip, you're going to see he actually makes a mistake. But that happens in football. We should have to this, and the fullback should be here, and we're going to create a wall. And this guy would be the responsibility of the receiver, but it'll give you the basic gist of what we're kind of doing. One thing I want you to notice about the running back is he's not really cutting. He's just running straight lines, hugging the wall. And you can start to see that wall is getting created. I should have paused it there. If we were had the fullback right there like we wanted, we would start to get a wall of bodies being created. Let's see if I can get the end zone clip a little bit. And it's not, you know, especially like here you're running it out of 13, you know, with the fullback in the boundary as well. A lot of teams, you know, aren't going to adjust correctly and, you know, or they're going to choose, hey, we're not giving you one-on-one -on -one of the field. So, you know, and yeah, you, exactly. wind, you wind up with, you know, a hat on a hat, and that, like you said, that back's not having to make a lot of tough decisions. He's not having to go left or right. You know, he's able to get downhill quick, and and it really simplifies some things for for sometimes your best athlete. Yeah, so you can see that we're getting that nice wall built. See that wall starting to get built, and when the, when the play's hitting, when it's really running, you're seeing that wall on film be developed, and the running back hits the wall. Like that's a pretty big hole for us to feel attack. Now we'll go to so how we're going to run the same concept. We're running uh, veer to the left. We're going to down block the fullback inside the end. We're reading this end right here, but we're going to get a pull on this read. This is our south film. So we would tell the fullback, we want you to take the easiest path to the Sam backer. A lot of times if the end is wide, it's going to be down inside. And what you'll get from really good coach teams is as the, just like a tackle and an end. As soon as that fullback goes down, the, the defensive end is going to squeeze it. You can coach your quarterback on, you know, being as aggressive or passive as you want. So in this in this year, we would tell our quarterback, like, hey, if, if you ever think you have the edge, pull the ball. Because personnel-wise, it was his advantage to pull the ball. But you can see just that hesitation from the defensive end is all we need for the quarterback to get the edge. And our O-line just building that wall. Working down blocks inside the left tackles down, the guards down. And that simplicity is huge for those guys up front, 100%. right? Especially if you're if this is something you're adding to that already existing gap scheme, yeah. Um, or even like it's kind of funny. It's like to me this is like the midway point between gap scheme and and zone. Like if you're a zone guy and you want to do some gap scheme, this is a good way to do it. But if you're a gap scheme guy and you want to get closer to the zone scheme stuff just in terms of, Hey, like if you're getting a lot of blitzing or if you get a team that's unpredictable with their front, you know, one of my always favorite things about coaching summer football is you have two pieces of film on a team and they haven't run 30, but little did you know that that week three of their D linemen are at prom. So you get a 30 front that weekend. You know what I mean? <laughs> when you're exactly doing, it. when you're doing this stuff, it's a little more forgiving, like you said, because yeah. you know it's a little, it's a little simpler in terms of the rules. Yeah. When we had, when I was coaching high school, we had some years we had like a really veteran line. We sent a couple guys to CIS and we got like front base. We were blocking different fronts. We had calls. There was other years when we had a lot of young guys and we basically just said like, just block on this angle and stay on your track and kind of whatever shows up, shows up. And we're just going to create a wall. So you can do it very easily. I mean, obviously the easier, sometimes you do it, you'll create, run up against problems. But I think if you were just like, Hey, we got to get this blocked and we can't really give our guys a lot of thinking because I don't want to think about who to block. I want to think about like feet and hands. We just say like run a track, create a wall, and we'll hit the wall. We're going to run veer to the left in this clip away from the fullback. And here's just a little variation. We're going to bring the fullback around and basically isolate to the Sam. So, or it'd actually be the will. It's the same type of concept. We want to bring the fullback up to the front side backer. It's just another way to get there. So you can see by putting the fullback in the field, you know, teams are – we were adjusting the – they were sliding the strength of the front to the to the fullback. So we were getting this out of one tech, which gives you a nice angle because you can bring your guard down on the one and your your tackle can get up to that mic backer. And then we just bring this fullback around right there. The defensive end was a little bit wider because he didn't have a fullback and we knew that he was probably going to play upfield. And again, you see there, like if you if you pulled that clip up in the middle – Right, it's pretty darn close to looking like power. It's just that guard is is not pulling. Now you're using that 
that fullback to to insert where the guard would be, you know, in that aspect of the gap scheme, and then you yeah. don't have to block the end because you're reading them. That's exactly it. That's this is our counter H play, exact same play. We're just not pulling the backside guard to kick out. We're reading the we're reading the fullback. So essentially, what we're doing on this in this kind of your concept is we're replacing the kick out with the read. Mm-hmm. So now we're going to look a bit of our arc scheme. So we would have the fullback arc. When we ever had, we had a, sorry, whenever we had a tight defensive end that our fullback didn't think he could get inside, we'd say, okay, just arc scheme and go get the Sam back or the exact same, same guy. A lot of times what will happen when you arc is the defensive end will get squeezed down inside. We would, we could coach him on things like if we wanted to get the quarterback involved, say teams were really fighting hard to get the defensive ends up field to keep the quarterback, you know, inside the pocket, hitting the ball. If we could say, okay, we're, we're going to run arc on any veer from now on, and we, we'll add a chip call. So we'll tell the fullback, hey, if we had a chip call, I want you to just get your hands on the defensive end a little bit as you arc, just to kind of influence him down to get our quarterback back involved in the run game. And this is going to look very similar to like what zone teams are running in their bluff scheme where they're going to bring that fullback around the defensive end. So right now we're going to run uh, in, uh, veer to the right. We're going to arc the fullback. And you're probably going to see him get his hands on the defensive end just to get a little chip because we want to get the quarterback back involved. We want to give him the best chance to pull this football just because he was our guy that we wanted running the ball. So in terms of you know the mesh here, obviously the back is is pretty deep here in this set. Um, what are your kind of coaching points for that back in the mesh? You know, yeah. obviously we've, we've, you know, really highlighted already that sure. he's, he's trying to ride that double team just, just like your normal gap scheme and, and run mm-hmm. the wall, like you said. Yeah. What yeah. are we, what are you kind of doing in terms of the footwork and the depth of the back sure. on the mesh? And I got, that's a great question. I got a drill that I'll show you later that we ran. So we were, we had done, I, we had like been a ride and decide team. We'd also been a point team in terms of coaching the quarterback mesh. This year we were huge on point. We felt, I felt like it was way easier to uh, coach, less forgiving. The ride is nice it, where you you get the fullback, the ball in the running back's belly and you'll ride them through. Mm-hmm. You'll see like under center option teams do that. Um, I felt like it hit a little too slow and it kind of, it was pretty complicated. Whereas the point I think was easier. So basically we would tell our quarterback, imagine there's a midline. So we're on the hash. You got to step off the hash to give that running back the path. The running back's aiming spot is the guard's butt crack. Mm-hmm. And you're going to hit it as hard as you can. We would tell the quarterback, I want you to aim your belt buckle and your eyes and the football at the read. You're just going to hold the ball over the running back's line. And if that defensive end pinches down, just pull the ball. We tell the running back, if you're, if the ball is sticking there when you get to the ball, pull it. Or sorry, take it because it's a give. And then we would tell the, uh, the running back, like, you can never hit this fast enough. The faster we hit this, the better it is. So, when we're practicing this, I would stand behind and I'm just yelling like faster, faster, faster. Don't drop step. Just like explode out of the blocks of the snap, get downhill, hug the wall and just run. You're not a cutter. This isn't this. It's just straight lines running through people. The first guy that shows up is the guy that you have to run over or run through and just coaching like quicker, 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 because the quicker it happens, the, the more obvious the defensive end has to be. If that running back's hitting that wall as hard as he can, right up the guard's butt, and that defensive end wants to play it, he has to tear down right away. The biggest thing is when you get those ends that are very slow, there's like an option saying that if you're hard to read, you're easy to block, but if you're hard to block, you're easy to read, right? Yeah. So if you're hard to read, if you're a guy that's like kind of halfway playing, it's hard for our quarterback to read you. Then we have to go to other stuff. We have to go to like our trap game or our power game, but we wanted to run the viewer, so we had to make the defensive end easy to read. And the way you do that is got to make him make his decisions quickly. So by spreading the splits a little bit, and by making the, the running back run his wall, his wall as fast as he can, that defensive end had to decide, like, right now, am I going to the defensive end or am I upfield to contain the correct? So it became easier. Trying to look for, like, just little ways to game the system to get things out of this. For sure. Um, our running back might be a touch too deep in this formation. You can see the fullback there. We're going to focus on the fullback for a sec. Just kind of outside releasing that defensive end. And he's just getting a, a, enough hands on him. To make that defensive end step down, we are really just trying to influence this defensive end when we run an arc scheme by call to come down inside so we can get the quarterback to pull it. So just enough. You see that? Just enough of a touch on him to get down. And you'll really see it. I'm going to try to pause it at the right time. You can see that wall starting to be created. Mm-hmm. I don't have any end zone film here. That fullback comes around and gets in the wall. But you can really see that wall 
where if this ball gets given, there's a nice wall for that running back to run. Mm -hmm. But you can see that defensive end, he's down inside. His shoulders are starting to turn. We don't coach, like, you know, read the shoulders. We just basically said to our quarterback, give the ball to running back unless you think the defensive end is going to tackle him. Kind of make it easy. And so by coaching him to always think give, he's in a – He's reacting to the full to the defensive end versus trying to decide. If you're saying, "Hey, read the full the defensive end," he's got to process. Well, is this end down inside or is he staying outside? Then what do I do accordingly? But I think by giving him, "Hey, give it every time and less," he can load up to give, and then at the last second go, "Oh sh- no, this is a pull and pull it." So just by phrasing it a little differently as well. Um, but you're getting the nice wall built. The quarterback pulls the ball, and you can see by attacking the same side of the defense, you're kind of you're building a wall for these guys as well to have to avoid mm-hmm. guys that would be flowing to the quarterback, right? That next level of pursuit. Yeah, exactly. And it's a pretty simple play. Like this isn't overly complicated. And it's so good. Cause I think now, you know, and, and a lot of the high school coaches that <clears throat> I know and talk to, and even in the summer ball world, like when I look at the quarterbacks that I've had in Cambridge, you know, in my five years, almost all of them are good athletes that you could use, you know, some of this, um, but the majority of them have been guys like their athleticism is their, their best trait. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, yeah. you know, it's, it's about finding ways to, to get the quarterback involved in the run game. And the other nice thing here yeah. is like, if the quarterback's pulling it, he's attacking the perimeter. And yeah. like you said, you're building that wall for him anyway, yeah. you know, and that, that yeah. is something I think if you can keep it simple for the quarterback and then have him feel confident, like, okay, this is, if I pull it, this is the guy I'm going to have to make miss. Cause these yep. are the guys that are getting blocked. You know, I think that that's a huge advantage for the offense. Uh-huh. I agree. Here's uh, kind of the next step. So we're going to run the same type of scheme. We're going to arc the fullback. We're just going to have the fullback instead of blocking Sam just release the flat. So this becomes like a little kind of a play, well, like a little play action play. You can still read the defensive end on this if you want to give the quarterback an option to hand the ball off. I can't remember if we had. I think in this year we were just telling the quarterback, if we called this play, like, this would be like arc pass or – uh, veer pass. We just want you to kind of quick ride and then dump the ball off. But you can see it looks very similar. The old line's down blocking, building the wall. Our tackle gets out leveraged there, but the fullback takes a little bit of an arc step and then just releases to the flash. So that's a simple kind of like a progression play off of a concept that we have been running a bunch. The running back's the exact same. He's running downhill. Quarterback's technique's the same, just working his point technique. So you can start to build like a little bit of a series of offense. And then the next step would be <clears throat> sometimes we don't want to give the quarterback a read. So in this situation, we're going to run our veer right with the arc, and we're going to pull the backside tackle, and we're going to trap that read man. We're just going to hand the ball off as well. So we would call this veer trap or veer kick. Old lineman's working the down block, trying to build that wall. Right there, you can see the wall getting built. Fullbacks, veer releasing the defensive end. So the defensive end should hopefully have his eyes on him. And then we bring the backside tackle or the backside guard and we kick that read man out. And you get a nice little alley there to run. So just a kind of a next level, like a nice little variation that you could run on this. That's very simple. It, no new technique for us in terms of this. Like we're already running uh, like counter H with the, with the guard pulling and kicking. So there's no new plays, like no new techniques for the O lineman to have to learn. We're just changing the way that we're kind of presenting the play. And that makes it tough on that read guy, man. Like, if you're, you know, if you're worried about, you know, your coach is on you all day about get up the field, you know, or keep outside leverage on the quarterback, that makes you a, a terrible player to defend. Like you said, you're either easy to read or easy to block. Yeah. And now, you know, your O line is doing, other than that pulling guard, that's the same play for for four of the five guys up front. Yeah. And and it's this similar read for your back, right? Just now, yeah. you know, he's going to get the ball. He's still staying. He's still staying tight to that that down block or the wall, like you were calling it, and uh-huh. you know it's th- that's where I think you start to build on. Okay, we have one or two things that we can do off this. Like we know we're going to be good at this. This is what we want to major in. Yeah. But when you can have those little other additions be so tied to what you do, yet so different for the defense to defend. Like if I'm coaching that defensive end, I would want a wrong shoulder that puller. But I can't ask him to do that in this situation because there's no way I want your quarterback running the ball when you're running the veer. Uh-huh. So that that's what puts you know defenses in conflict. And I think, you know, the beauty of that is for ten players on the field, that's the same play. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. The running back for him, power, counter H, veer, veer weak. 
There's no difference. Up the guard's butt, run the wall as hard as you can, cut off the guy that shows up to tackle you. Quarterback a little different, but it's the exact same play for every other guy. Yeah. And that's kind of what we liked about it. So here, this situation, we're going to run Veer to the to the right. We're going to set the fullback opposite just to get the strength there. Now we're getting a 50 front. We're basically going to bring the fullback across, and you know we call it like a wham or a slice. We're going to block the read man. Just a situation where we want to show our Veer, but we don't want the quarterback to have to, to run the ball in this play just for him break. And just to show the defense, we're like, hey, you're going to get blocked from all different angles as well. So this would be like our Veer slice play. The angle, the fullback's not the greatest – but uh, you got the basic concept. You can start to see that wall getting created as well. I mean, we lose the block on the backside. I think he's the nose. But you can start to see that wall getting created if we had stayed on this guy. There's the wall. Now, the one thing, if I was coaching our quarterback, I'd tell him, like, carry out your fake on this. Yeah. <laughs> Keep running, but high school kids. The uh, the ability to package so many of these things together is what you know yeah. to me makes this such a challenging thing to defend. And I think it's it's interesting because like obviously at Western, you know, you guys have historically been known for like so much power, right? Mm -hmm. And now like you were saying, you know, when when your brother was there, and and now some of the stuff you're doing, you make such a living on inside zone. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting to see you know the your ability to kind of package those two things together and and. It's hard to be good at, at more than one thing, but when you can, it's hard to be good at anything, right? Like it's tough, yeah. you know, finding yeah. success on offense and three down football, you know, isn't, isn't an easy thing. But, you know, when you're able to take four or five plays and keep them the same for eight guys, and then, you know, we're all going to have those little, very, we need the variations, right? You can't sit there and yeah. run, you know, even if you are a true triple option team, you're running yeah. midline, you're running load, you're running for sure, for sure, some for different sure. stuff, right? So I think that's that's the secret sauce there for sure. A lot of it, too, is, like, we wanted to keep the ball carry that we felt was our best guy involved. So, like, if we had a, a, a great quarterback, we wanted to force pulls as much as possible. So by adding, like, the chip game in, which is something we kind of, like, organically happened, we are like, hey, if we just chip that defense bit down, we'll start to influence him to the, to the running back. We can pull the ball. And then in the summer, we had a running back we wanted the ball, so we'd say, like, okay, if we run, like, our slice game or our kick game, we can start to influence the defensive end to, to stay out where we can hand mm -hmm. the ball. So just kind of creating situations. Here's the next progression off the slice play with the fullback because we're just going to have him bluff and then run to the flats. And this is like, a, if you're an inside zone, split zone team, this is an RPO that everybody in the world's running. So we're running the same kind of concept. And this is, again, something that I, you know, when Steve became the, the coach at, when he started coaching at Western, they were running this play at Western. I said, like, that's an amazing play. How can I run that off of Veer? So we kind of created it by using the veer concept as well. So we're going to bring the fullback across and just have him go to the flats. We're running veer to the right. You can see our lines blocking down. They should be building that wall. And then we just dump the ball off to the fullback. Nice, easy completion there. So a little progression. Everything kind of has something off. Here's another concept that we run. Well, we're going to show veer. Uh, we're going to actually pass block the front. We're going to have our running back because this team was so focused on obviously Ethan keeping the ball that we said, okay, like, we're going to have our fullback or our running back fake the beer, and then you just leak to the flats because he's the player that we wanted to get the ball to as well. So we ran like a little play action, but it looks very similar to Veer. We'll call this fullback elite or running back leak. So we sell Veer. You can see our quarterback. He's meshing it a little bit. We're a point team, but he he would mesh. He was pretty good. Like he kind of started to, you know, build his own game off this as well. So we just bring the running back to the through. We dump it off to him. Nice, easy completion as well. Just a little variation to keep people honest as teams started to obviously play heavy to the veer and to the quarterback. You can still see the fullback is arcing, blocking the Sam, saying a little pick on that Sam backer. The other yeah. tough thing is for the defense, like the presentation is all, you know, almost the exact yeah. same, right? And that that's that's when it becomes, I mean, we all know as coaches, like players are going to make mistakes, coaches are going to make mistakes. Like the game is often about, you know, influencing your opponent to think you're doing one thing and, and to do something else. And I think when you kind of – you look at a lot of stuff people are running now, you know, you have your zone stuff, you have your your uh, man scheme stuff, whatever it is. When you can have – when you can attack using those different elements and it all comes off looking the same, you know, at the high school level, like, you you know, that that's a very challenging thing to deal with at our level, university level, never mind um, high school oh, kids. A million percent. Like, option football 
is scary to people. Like if you hear option, you're like, Oh my God, like pitching the ball and all that stuff. So we kind of, we would coach like our guys in high school, like, Hey, let's make everything look like we're reading. Even if there's, we're just running power, let's just mm-hmm. kind of all our mechanics back and make it look like we're reading people just to get people very scared. They're like, is this an option play? We had so many plays where we, there was no option involved, but people are screaming option option just because we were, you know, getting the ball there and kind of guiding with the running back pointing or, 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 uh, riding or what we ended up becoming like kind of like a half point half ride combination but you're right just presenting it like we were running option stuff a lot of our stuff m- might not have been a, re- a replay but just presenting it to people and kind of make it look the same now we're getting into like the next level so this is what we came up with in the summer the, the second year we were coaching this so, so the first year we just basically read the, the end and we'd run the quarterback or run the running back and then we kind of said like hey let's add like a triple option component to it but our triple option became a pass so the concept we really liked is like a three-man snag. Um, the outside receiver is going to run 10 yards to the hash and basically sit on the hash. Our number two is going to run a deep corner. And our number three would run the bubble screen. And then we basically would tell the quarterback, hey, after you pull the ball, we want you to think run, but if this corner's wide open, just chuck it up. If not, you can kind of find the snag sitting in the middle and you got that bubble screen as well. The nice thing about this is we gave the quarterback as well the option, and I did another talk a, a, a week ago. We gave the quarterback the option pre-snap of if they're not covering the formation, we can always just throw the bubble as well. But if we get into the triple part where we start pulling the ball, now you have some places to throw it. So I'll show you a couple clips of that. First one is we're going to pull the ball and we're going to throw the bubble screen. So we motion to 31. Our quarterback's reading. You can see that we're arcing the fullback right there. He's arcing to the Sam. We're reading the defensive end. Defensive end gets a little chip from the fullback, and we pull the ball. And then our quarterback comes out. We just throw it. That's essentially like a pitch phase of your triple option. Pitching the ball out to the to the uh, to the wing back in the flex zone. A nice easy completion. And the kid at quarterback, actually, that's your guy. He just committed to Lori. There you go. It's it's tough, man, because like you know, most offenses have that have one receiver that defenses aren't really comfortable leaving one on one. So anytime you get in this thirty one or thirteen or forty one or whatever your variation is, uh-huh. you put people in a tough spot. Like if you're willing to front side RPO the other side, whether it's like this or any way you do that, you know, obviously you need to execute, but you're putting your guys in a situation where hey, they're going two on one in the boundary. <clears throat> if if we can, you know, if they've got seven guys, like here's a two back run fit. Right, all of a sudden they only have so many options to get everything else covered down, and no one wants to give up that corner ball, right? So you're probably going to want, you know, someone with outside leverage on that, someone vertical with inside leverage. Yeah. You create these ways, and like as a as a guy who's an offensive lineman, like anytime I want to run the ball, but if you can give me something to say, hey, if they're going to load the box, like this is what we're, what we're going to do, mm-hmm. so that a teams aren't going to load the box on you as much, and b when we do run the ball, teams aren't going to be able to just tee off. Like yeah. that's such an underratedly important part of every offense. Like if you don't have that way that yeah. presents as a run to kind of get you out of jail when you call, say you're calling your inside zone, your power, your veer, whatever. Yeah. If you don't have a way to like, you know, and I watch so much of the stuff you're seeing now, whether it's in the pros or, or whatever is to, when you're in a run play, you know, we can't all have quarterbacks that'll change the whole call and check with the old line. And on the Canadian 22nd shot clock, like it's tough. You know, yeah, but exactly. if you have the ability to say like, we're in an awful play right now, they're in, yeah. they're in yeah. seven, they're bringing six or seven and, and, you know, two off the edge of the point of attack. I'm going to go throw this bubble into space. Like that's such a valuable piece that I think is kind of intimidating, kind of like option, like, oh, you're going to be a triple option team. But in terms of execution, like, yeah, you got to work it, but it's like anything else. Like if you're going to complete mesh or four verts or whatever, like you're going to have to work all of it, right? It's not 100%. a hard throw. Yeah, and like the kid, I'll go back a clip. The kid playing quarterback here, the kid at South, Ethan Martin, stud, fast, strong, track star, running back body. This guy here, he's like six five. He's not a he. He can run, but he's not a kid that you you're gonna you know pay to run. So this kind of becomes his running phase is by pulling the ball. He can throw a bubble screen, and it kind of keeps him involved without has, asking him a six five kid to run around and take a bunch of hits. Whereas you know, Ethan, we wanted him running the ball. He was delivering the hit. So you're kind of giving a quarterback a chance to keep the same play going, but playing with strength. The other thing it does is it forces DBs to cover even on like poles where the ball's threatening the edge. So now you can't have this corner or the half screaming down to tackle and support the run because we got a corner up behind him or a snagger up sticking inside of him. 
The third thing it does is it basically takes anybody on that side of the defense, and they're kind of eliminating themselves. We're splitting the defense in half and just saying, okay, we'll just play against that side. In this situation, we're going to pull the ball. We're running veer to the left, and we're going to throw the snag route to this guy, and he's going to sit in a nice little window here. You see the defense, the fullback, I think we're actually reading this guy right here. So this would be a down scheme from our fullback. That fourth player, the guy that we're reading, stays inside on the running back. We pull the ball. You can see that snag just kind of sits right behind the half. And that's actually not a superly complicated pass route to coach your, your uh, receiver. We tell him, get to 10 to 12 yards on the hash, sit on the hash, and then kind of find the open space based on the half. So you might have to slide inside or kind of come down a little bit. We'll just do a drill where we would run that route one-on-one, -on -one and I would sit on the hash and give him a read. And it kind of incorporates this. But it's a nice little route for a guy to get open. And that's an easy completion. And especially, like, once you've established the veer, you know, now you're throwing these pass concepts, and it's almost four on three every time because everyone yeah, exactly. else is in the fit. Exactly. So now we'll go to the corner route. show you the corner to start so we're going to run veer to the left we're going to hit the corner to number two we're actually in a 32 set here as well you can see that corner the corner back the widest defender he starts to jump the snag out in front of him and our quarterback's able to just pull up and lock that nice easy corner out that's i think that was the first play of the game nice way to start just a huge chunk play. And it becomes tough. Like like you said, you're packaging this stuff together and it's all coming off that same action. You know, and I think your kids can see it. Like it's like, hey, we're going to do this and then this is our adjustment yeah. here. And because they all build off each <clears throat> other, like there's so much shared understanding between each concept. Your exactly. guys, it's something they can really be confident in. 100%. So here's the last uh, kind of component. We're going to run the same concept. We're going to pull the ball. But we're going to keep the ball. So our correct still has the option to run. And I'll show you kind of why this works. So they got to cover the snag in the corner where they're going to get completed over their heads. And you see this, uh, I think that's the linebacker. He starts to expand out to cover the bubble. So it just creates running lanes. This is Rich Rodriguez, Denard Robinson right here. This is it. A a high school-aged Coach Yonkis is sitting in the stands at the big house realizing I know nothing about football as <laughs> Denard is running triple option bubble screen. But this, that's exactly it. We, we could run this one play over and over again, and you're going to get, you know, a give, a quarterback pull to run, a quarterback pull to bubble, a quarterback pull to snag, a quarterback pull the corner. We can run it to the boundary, and, you know, we would stack our receivers just to give a different presentation. We'll run into the field and spread them out. We can go 32. We can go uh, 23 to the boundary. We can run this up from two-man game and just have two receivers on either side. We take away the bubble screen. We have the snag in the corner. We can go snag and bubble, take away the corner out, we can go corner and bubble, take away the snag rope. And just by creating like a package of things that we're doing over and over again, super easy concept. That's kind of my, my big thing. Like I just want like, you know, I want, sometimes I'm accused of like being too simple, but like I want the simple things. I don't want guys to do a bunch of stuff because, you know, where I come from, where I coached that before I got to Western, like we didn't have a lot of time to do a, a bunch of different things. So we had to get really good at a small package of stuff. And this is kind of why I liked it. Uh, a couple other things we would do. We played a, you know, we had situations where sometimes we knew or just even if you don't understand why, you can just kind of feel like these guys are really hard down on the running back. So we, we call this play Apple. And it, what Apple was is auto pull. We're going to pull some backside linemen. We're going to sell Veer, just like we talked about earlier. The presentation is the same. And we're just going to run our quarterback out the edge with a bunch of guys in front of them. Because after like, you know, three quarters of us running Veer against uh, Essex here, we just felt like they're really hard to the, to the running back. And we can get a big chunk by getting some blockers in front of our quarterback. So just a little variation after we had run a bunch of veer, we're going to pull the backside uh, and the front side guard. I think we actually pull the center here. You can see the defense when they start to see that veer motion, they just start to tighten up, come downhill. And we're able to capture the edge. And by getting guys out in front of our running back that we felt was a pretty good runner, just, a, just another cheap way to run. And this is essentially our buck sweep play that we were running as a gap scheme team as well, or, you know, you know, power wide with a, with a wide puller. One more time. 
just watch the front the watch the front side backer defensive end all get down kind of getting caught in the crap and we're able to capture the edge well when they're consistently seeing that wall right like it's tough for them like they've got yeah. to come down and and hammer that wall and now all of a sudden you're getting out into the edge or you know your quarterback's out in the pull phase yeah like i think that's one of the that's one of the underrated pieces of like the down block pull through stuff is it takes advantage of whatever whatever way the defense wants to play it. If they want to hammer downhill, you know what I mean, and fit the runs, well, we're building the wall. If they want to try and run over the top, we're hopefully getting inside that kick out. You know, and I think that like a yeah. lot of people obviously are big into the zone stuff now, and like I, I, I use it, I love it. When you get a lot of blitzing 30s and things like that, like it's so good. Um, but it's so interesting to see, you know, a lot of those zone principles of simplicity, but it's it's the this theme of the play is a gap scheme power. You're just not pulling anybody. Exactly. And that's kind of where we we, we, we we liked it a lot is you know, sticking the power as close as we can. There's problems with it. We had some issues with it. Certain fronts are very challenging. Or if you're playing a guy that's just really good, but I think the kind of the theme of it is, you know, we wanted to run a read component to our offense, but we just couldn't run um, the zone stuff. We couldn't block it, so we had to come up with a way. And if you were a zone team, you might not just say, okay, we're going to throw Veer, and maybe you can run it all with your zone concept. But if you're a gap scheme, this is a great way to bring in some kind of an option component to football without changing what you're coaching, and you're getting the guy, your guys to do the same stuff over and over again. Uh, here's a couple ideas of things that we I wish we had ran when I look back, but we never actually did. But I think you could run it as well. So – the first one would be this – I don't know why I call it Clemson Veer because I watch Clemson, right? but basically just having the quarterback and the running back exchange responsibilities. So now the quarterback's going to be the inside downhill runner and the running back's going to be outside. And you just read the front side end as well. You can either pitch it out or toss it underhand like a you know like a regular old school toss. But just by changing their angles, you kind of create like packages. But really for the old line, the fullback, it's the same play. We're just having the quarterback and the running back exchange who's the outside man and who's the inside man on the Veer. For sure. And sometimes, too, that gets you out of, uh, like, tendencies with location of the back, you know what I mean, yeah, things like that. Exactly. And then the inverted veer, a lot of teams running. We we never actually got into this as well, but if I could go back in time, this would be something I would do where you, you just set the running back, you know, in the offset gun, and you have him in the quarterback exchange responsibilities. He's going to come across space. Your quarterback's going to ride it, ride it, ride it, and then stay inside the defensive end or handoff. This is, you know, Cam Newton ran this at Auburn when they won the mm-hmm. national championship. This, I think this was his play. So you can see if you if you want to do it as offset gun type look, you could run like a same side or an opposite side look and you're you're creating, you know, a very similar package for everybody else. It's just by changing two guys' paths and alignments and responsibilities, you're creating like a package of things that look um, very different. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch of stuff you could run off this as well if this was something you wanted to invest in. But what I like about it is, you know, just like the zone stuff, it's the same blocking scheme for the old line. We're just changing the presentation. I think that's what we, when you listen to really good zone coaches talk, that's what they talk about. For our, our inside five or inside six, it's the same play. We're just changing the the window dressing. Well, for it's the exact same for us. For our five guys and our fullback, it's the same play. We're just changing the window dressing. Just uh, being able to run that downhill gap scheme with the wall being built versus um, zoning away. So that's basically it. That's kind of what we're doing. Here's a quick drill that we ran. We ran this when I was at South, you know, once a week. When I coached junior Mustangs, we would try to do this every day for at least five minutes. We call this the Veer Mesh Drill. We used, like, a hose to set up as an offensive line. And we had painted, like, you know, different parts to show, like, where the holes, the blockers are, where the gaps are. We'd have a center, usually a back of quarterback snapping. We'd have a quarterback and a running back. We'd set up our, our PVC arch over the guard to get the running back on aiming spot and also get his pads down. We'd have a backup quarterback as the read man. And we just basically worked beer mesh reading this guy. And we used a cone, Don's Burke, and we used a cone here to give the quarterback like a finish spot. And we would just run beer mesh over and over again. Um, a couple of the coaching points, you know, we would tell the quarterback, you must step over the midline. So we, I put like a hockey stick or a pool noodle between his legs and have him bring his left foot over so that he, I knew he was getting to the mesh point. You don't want him kind of stepping backwards because now he's end up reaching the football too far over because our running back's aiming spot is the guard's butt, not the center's butt. You know, we would tell the quarterback, get your eyes, belt buckle, and ball pointing at the read snap or the read man ASAP. We tell the running back, you got to explode out of the blocks as quick as possible. Don't drop step. Don't wait. You know, the coaching point that I always said was this play can never hit fast enough. We can always hit it faster. I would constantly be screaming like faster, faster, faster. We got to get the back in the hole faster. We got to get the back diving faster. 
you know, I think we mentioned this, the quarterback should always anticipate a give read only pulling when the defensive end commits down inside. The line splits that we use will make it difficult for the defensive end to play the handoff unless he commits to the running back as soon as possible. And then both players should finish regardless of give or keep. That's a big coaching point. If you're pulling the ball, you got to have your running back downfield. And I think we talked about this on our running back clinic. By doing that, you start to create the linebackers. They can't just start to floor the quarterback. They have to respect that the running back might have the ball. And the same if you're giving the ball, the quarterback has to tackle out here because you might get this linebacker or this half to stay wide. You're creating lanes for your running back. And then we would tell the quarterback, don't, we wouldn't want the quarterback to swing or ride the ball, make a point with the eyes, ball, and belt buckle. We wanted to hit faster. Our, again, big coaching point was like, this can never hit fast enough. We want the defensive end to have to choose right now. We don't want to give him the option to play 50 50. And we want to get the ball into the second level, pass line scrimmage as quick as possible. We don't want to have to hold blocks for as long as we can. We basically, a lot of times, what you'll end up happening is linemen are just like walling off guys versus actually trying to like engage them and drive them. Just get in the way, create like kind of a, a lane. And the back's got to hit it fast. So just dive, 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 straight downfield, straight downfield, straight downfield. You got to coach your running backs a little bit different. It's not a play if you're running this where they're making cuts. It's a it's a straight hill, downhill play. But what I like about that is you can, especially in high school, you can use a lot of different kids on your team who might not be your future running back. You might have a, a number one running back who's really good, but you might have a second guy who's just a tough, hard kid that doesn't have a lot of running back skills, but he can run straight lines as hard as he can, and he's fearless. And I think you can coach him on how to take a mesh – and just run straight downhill as hard as you can. You can get a lot of it. We actually used a kid when I was coaching high school that was exactly that that mold. He didn't have a lot of uh, natural like cutting ability, but he had the ability to just like he'll run through people as hard as he can without fear. We coached him on how to take the hand off, and he became a pretty good little veer dive back. So that's essentially it. Hopefully this is interesting for you. I think I like it. This is kind of my wheelhouse, and some people aren't into it. You can get as fancy out of this as you wanted. If you wanted to add like a pitch component and bring guys around, there's a lot of stuff you could do where you can make this into a true triple. But if you're just looking for a way to get a very athletic quarterback involved and you're running some gap scheme stuff already, I think this is an easy logical progression to um, creating like an option package in your offense without re- uh, getting too, you know, nuanced or technically, you know, advanced. So, yeah, I think it's one of those things. Anytime you can add on what you already do is is huge and try and limit the, the thinking for the guys up front, like we've said. So, you know, just to kind of recap, you know, we went through a lot of stuff there. If you were, you know, packaging three or four plays together, like you talked about the base veer and then the fullback's going to take his best angle, you know, whether that means he releases outside the end um, or he's going to he's gonna basically join the down block, that's that base veer. Um, you know, what would be kind of your progression in terms of, okay, like obviously we went through it, but we went through a lot. Sure. As you're adding on to that, what would be kind of your checklist? If you could only, if you could take two or three kind of plays to pair with it in sequence, what would those be? I would probably go veer with the fullback to the front side and just teach him that difference between like down blocking versus an end that you can get inside or arcing versus a tighter end. The next thing I would do is I would add in a chip component so by coaching your, like telling your fullback in the call, we're going to run veer right chip. You're going to auto arc him and have him give that shot, like the defensive end, the read key, a little shot. That'll keep your quarterback, gets him back involved in the read. So if you're starting to face a team that, the reality is if you're running this, you probably have a quarterback you want running the ball. So mm-hmm. if you start to see teams that like, hey, we haven't given the ball a ton, they're, you know, they're and it's playing a little bit wider. By adding the chip key, it kind of just gives your quarterback a chance to get back in the read game. So I would put that in. The next thing I would do is run away from the fullback just so you don't create a crazy tendency where you're mm-hmm. always running at the fullback. Plus, you can start to attack one techniques if you're getting 40 front teams that want to shift their strength to the fullback. And then you can bring your fullback around if you want. But you don't need to do that. I think if you just are able to run it out of one tech, you just create a different angle and you still can keep your wall. And then the next thing I would do is have your play action where you're going to leak your fullback to the flat. Just such an easy completion in, in high school or summer football to leak that fullback through off a run action and dump it off. And then um, if I got comfortable with that and I really like it, I might, I might look at the, the triple pass game as well and adding mm-hmm. that snag concept or like a smash. We'd also run in the past where we'd go like two-man with a smash concept on the outside. And just getting that involved as well kind of gives you a chance. Um, and you can either run that as a true read play or you can run it as a play action where you're going to run veer, but you're going to actually have the fullback block the read man and just get your quarterback outside the edge. And I think if you do that, you're going to have a nice little package but for your quarterback, your old line, and your running back, it's the same basic mechanics, just kind of adding on the peripheral stuff. 
And then after that, if I liked it, I might look at like, can we trap the read man? Can we bring like the backside guard or backside tackle through to trap the read man? If teams are, you know, really playing like that half 50, 50 read man. And then by changing the way the, the place your fullback starts, having them on the backside, you know, coming through either kicking the read man, just different ways to block the read man, you know, just to screw with them. I think would be like the progression I would go, but yeah, that's, it's so, yeah. it's so tough to defend and, you know, it's interesting to see how similar some of that stuff is to, you know, inside zone and and the benefits of, of it to a team that's, you know, looking to keep things simple up front and, and make that addition. So really appreciate it, Coach. It's awesome hey, no detail problem. in the presentation and, you know, to Thanks. have the drills and stuff there lined up. It's amazing. Uh, sure. Appreciate you being on again. Always a pleasure, man. I love talking football with you guys. So. Thanks a lot.